bring me your tired, your stressed, your overwhelmed and anxious, yearning for some joy in life. It's time to go out and play. Welcome back to Playgrounding. This is Kara Stort Fortier, and this week we are going to have an encore visit. I guess what night shows say are there, she's a friend of the show, uh, Pat Rumba. Pat Rumba is a is the founder of Let's Play America, and she is affectionately known as the Play Lady. And I'll be linking to her other episode in this week's as well. Um, Pat is very well known in her hometown of Tacoma, Maryland for putting on play days. Um, she organizes these play days there in person. So what we're going to be talking about today might not seem relevant for right now because everyone is locked down. And um, I know I just read an article about Meow Wolf, how they had some amazing plans um, for expansion out into all different parts of the country that are dashed because we can't get together and play. We can't hug and touch and all those things that we all miss so much. But what Pat talks about today, I think will help us while we're in lockdown um, until that time to dream big. That's what the whole point of all of this is, is to dream big about bringing play out into the world. And as Scott Froshauer said um, a few weeks ago, we need to keep working to move the culture forward. So I think what Pat is going to bring us, um, that is what she has to offer. Pat has the Let's Play America has just released a new ebook that is based on Pat's vast experience of putting play dates together for her entire community. Um, it, there are small play days where you can just organize them within your own neighborhood, maybe even now with people that you trust and are locked down with. Um, it could be through your place of worship. It could be a citywide event. It could be huge. It could be small. Um, play Day Handbook is a generous generous outpouring of her knowledge about putting these kinds of things together, nuts and bolts from the very beginning through cleanup and evaluation. Um, and one more note also before we jump in, um, when it comes to play, we often make distinctions between adult play and children's play. And that's for good reason. There are a lot of big differences, but this conversation is really different. And it kind of struck me as we were going through. Um, I, I got it about halfway through my conversation with Pat. She really bridges this divide. Um, and these play days and all the advice in the play day handbook are for kids only play days. They are for play days for nursing homes. They are for play days for the entire community with play activities for both adults and children and not separated. The types of play activities are all, all mixed together. And in her playbook or play day handbook, you will find a listing of all those activities and ways you can do them. OK, so here it is time for you to meet the play lady herself. Pat Rumba has an MA in sports psychology. She taught physical education education and bleh, she taught physical education and sports for 30 years. She is the founder of the nonprofit Let's Play America that designs and conducts play events in various settings. In 2018, Pat received the National Youth Development Award. And now, here's Pat. Well, thank you so much Pat for rejoining me on Playgrounding. It's so great to see you again. <laughs> You too. I, I love um, talking to you and talking about play. I know, me too. Wow. Well, back when I first had you on, I mean, I was focusing mostly on play for adults, but when I got to talk to you and learn about free play and what it is and why it's so important, it just really, it got me, it got me good. And we've been focusing a lot on adult play so far, but I, I just really feel like us adults have a lot of power over what kids get to do and what they don't get to do. So we should talk about it as adults, about the kids. So thank you so much for coming on. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, well, so you have some new things coming up with Let's Play America. Um, tell me what you guys have been up to. Well, like all of us, our, our world changed. And uh, the play events we were going to be holding in the spring and planning for the summer all went went to the sideline and and said well sometime but not right now and so we said to ourselves what have we been wanting to do and the number one thing we've been wanting to do is to write a play day handbook because we have we have literally had 26 play days closed over 25 streets to play we have 
join tons of uh, events, other events by adding play. And uh, I've, I've presented a lot of, about play. And we just said, you know, we have all this information, but we don't have enough documentation. So our, uh, one can sign up on the website. We can talk all about that. Uh, uh, it, once you sign up and make a small donation this year, what's this year? 20 uh, you will receive this incredible, valuable resource that anyone that wants to play, um, anyone that values play, uh, whether you're focusing on that friend that has a six-year-old and you want to give her ideas, or maybe you have these super seniors in your life and you're just, you're, you're missing them and figure and wanting to figure out how can I, uh, uh, play with them during this time, we can. There's ideas, there's ways you can play alone. You can play with one other person. You can play safely with your family. Uh, and of course, virtually, uh, because what we're doing now uh, through Skype or Zoom or all the other ways. And, and then there's down the road of planning that play day for your community, which um, this is going to give you so many ideas and it's going to help you really look at your your community in a, in a whole new light. And speaking of that community, Kara, it, it could be the preschool where your child goes or the preschool where you teach, or it could be any age level for any school because a Imagine being a college freshman and going to college and there being a play day for all the freshmen. And, and, and the, your first one of your first experiences is to play with a new friend. Um, <laughs> you, you're, it's just going to bond you together. Uh, and then there's your workplace. You know, uh, maybe you haven't seen your coworkers for four or five five months and this would give you a chance to reunite and play with them your place of worship have wow. mine is zoom for forever and we are missing seeing each other in person uh and of course there's the community where you live and i i um could go on and on but let me let you Ask me the question. <laughs> no, this is amazing. Well, what I'm what I'm cur most curious about is just to sort of back up and just take me on a day in the life, first of all, of a play day with children. Like, what does a play day look like for children? And then I actually want to know about what that looks like for a college freshman and what that looks like for seniors. Um, this is this is exciting, but I'm I'm imagining people going like in in a lot of people's minds, the idea of a play day sounds like something you just do for kids because the the, the words. Um, and then you're saying it for all these age groups. What does that mean for each one? Wonderful, wonderful question. So we'll start with children. Okay. Uh, so our our uh, annual play days are held now at a middle school. We did hold it at a playground with an indoor uh, facility and a restroom for the first play day, but we outgrew that. <laughs> so we we actually are in middle school we if if there would be bad weather we have a couple of gyms and an all purpose room and restrooms and but we also have tons of room outside so as you're walking up or or driven to the parking lot and then you walk over you one you probably hear music so we 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 really aim to bring performers of bands Ooh. sometimes they bands. Uh, or we have a community band in Tacoma Park that kicks off our play day and they're they're playing fun music as like, you walk up. Like a rock marching band or a, or a rock band or both? <laughs> uh, we have we have had those, but the community band consists of more more super seniors, but people of all ages, primarily older adults. Cool. That, that um, just play fun songs from Take Me Out to the Ball Game. To, you know, just, you know, it gets you in the mood to yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. And then have you ever heard of the activity Touch a Truck? No. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Talk about fun. So imagine a backhoe, a dump truck, a tractor, big, big, big um, uh, vehicles. Our public works, they bring 
anywhere from five to seven vehicles, maybe more, and they put them in this area. And you can be a small child uh, and you your parent either lets you climb up on your own and boy, does that feel good and a little risky, but you do it or or they help you up. Sometimes you see the adults up there with them. <laughs> um, uh, our only complaint so this is this is to community folks, everyone listening, was a few times people said, those horns. <laughs> so we now mute the horn. Oh. <laughs> Let kids beep the horns for hours. What would be the point without the horns? <laughs> Very conflicted on that. I wanted, oh, come on. For, for four hours, you can stand up. <laughs> but, um, so. So there's that. Now there's, um, we have an, um, an activity called just boxes and we try to get up to a hundred boxes, a refrigerator box, a, a, um, maybe a dishwasher box. And Oh, the things that you see, you see some kids stay at the just boxes the entire four hours. They stack them. They make things out of them. And and we also have accessories, ropes and sheets and markers. You can do whatever you want. I, I have even seen volunteer teens that get community service hours. I could tell you more about that. They mm -hmm. they help set up and they play with everyone. And um they are they're just terrific. Anyway, they um uh have put the boxes on their body and they dance to the music. It, it's, it's so much fun. <laughs> um, we try to bring in some instructors, but it's very join in if you want, or just watch the performer. So there could be a fun Zumba instructor, or there could be a yoga person off to the side. Uh, we have, uh, we have a couple of main activities that we always have. One is dress up. Oh, I of mean, course. Or can you imagine if yes. we went out and we'd put on hats and wigs and tutus and, and, <laughs> and we and accessories and beads, um, uh, not only the kids. Oh yeah. In S September, 2019, we had 25 football players come from the high school football team. Awesome. And all over. And they all had on their red jerseys and they looked real, you know, beefy and looked macho. And I said, guys, you all look the same. Go to dress up and and dress up and then let's get together and have some photos. It was hilarious. <laughs> People would say, Pat, have you seen the football team? Yeah. Have you seen what they're wearing? I loved it. <laughs> I also have face painting. You know, uh, most kids, they just love to have their face painted and we give them choices. Uh, you know, you can you can become a lion or maybe you just want stars all over your face. <laughs> and and then there's always hula hoops and hop gotch and jump rope. And we have, we have a dynamite double dutch lady. She can teach a double dutch. Oh, and, and boy, the adults that, you know, used to play double dutch, they just love it. Uh, we have a giant chess set. We have a giant checkers, a giant Connect Four. Uh, inside one of the rooms, we have board games because you know there's there's the children and adults that want a little bit more quiet. They come to play, and you you see them kind of walk a little more cautiously. Well, next thing you know, they're in playing Monopoly or or some fun game. Oh, we always have healthy snacks. Um, and our, our local, um, grocery store, giant food and our co-op, they donate these healthy snacks. That's great. Starbucks has donated coffee, um, and other, other, um, uh, desserts a few times, which parents are like, Pat, I didn't know I was going <laughs> to free, you know, uh, some of the very best things about our play days is, uh, a short story. I was, we were planning the first play day, Kara. And I, I was, um, I'm friends with, he's a neighbor. He was our state congressman, uh, uh, Jamie Raskin. I said, Jamie, we're going to hold a play day. Would you like to be involved? He said, yes, I would. And he leads Simon Says. And in 2016, he actually became a U.S. congressman. Wow. And he's 
leads, Simon says. So the funniest <laughs> thing, these adults, a week or two before, Pat, is Jamie coming? When, when's he going to be leading? And you see an an influx of adults come right before because the congressman's mm-hmm. going to be leading. And then they play, and it's it's hilarious. You That's- have a four-year-old and an adult all following along. Okay, so, so I take back my question from before because I, I was thinking, oh, well, it would have to be different things. No, absolutely not. <laughs> that will sound like so much fun no matter what age you are. Well, if you decide to get this uh, Play Day handbook, there are at least two or three videos of Play Days. Mm-hmm. And so you'll, you'll get to experience it. And And what's great is if you have a young person at home, they can watch it with you. And and then you could say, what did you like about it? What would you like to play? What could we plan to play? Uh, so there you go. Yeah. yeah. So a college student, I um, I um, had had um, a chance in 2019 to go back to my undergrad, which is Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And I got to um, speak to about 75 students in a gym. And it, it was a Monday morning. They were they were a little bit groggy. So I said, we're not just talking, we're playing. Well, I got them all up. And have you ever played rocks, paper, scissors? Shoot? Yes, yes. Yeah. So if we played it right now, want to play it? Sure. All right. Okay. Go. One, two, three. Go. Rock, paper, scissors, Ooh. shoot. Oh, <laughs> I went too fast. Ready? You say go. One, two, three. Go. Rock, paper, scissors. Go. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can't see yours. Ah, oh, yes, you got me. <laughs> So what would happen, Carrie, you would root for me and Uh I go someone else and we keep going and we keep going. And so at the end, there's two people going and all these people shouting, go, Kara, go, go, Kara, go. (laughs) And and if you are a winner, we lift you up. And they were just like, oh, my God. (laughs) So uh, I had brought a few a few uh, things. I brought hula hoops. Have you ever tried the weighted hula hoops? Yes, I, I'm not very good at it, but I've got, I've gotten better at it. It's fun. Uh, <laughs> weighted ones us adults can do, and so uh, the here these college students were loving that. I had um, I had a, a hopscotch mat, and and then I I said. Anybody out there like to be a leader? And a couple of hands went out. So I, I picked someone and we played follow the leader. And so the leader did all kinds of things and they went around the gym playing because at any age, mm-hmm. any age you can play yeah. and have fun. Now, our super seniors, uh, we have brought them a play day to a, uh, uh, let's see, was it? Was it 2019 or 20, 2018? We we went to a um, uh, uh, an apartment building where primarily seniors live, and uh, we had gotten a grant. Uh, and so, oh my goodness, uh, we brought in a line dancer, <laughs> and, and we also had the community band playing. So we had people up in their walkers doing. Oh. Line- and and these teen volunteers, you know, were with them, and it was it was just so fun. Uh, they they actually, up until I couldn't go and visit them, you know, in person. Pat, when are we gonna have another play day? <laughs> so th- there are things you can do. Uh, by the way, we had also played cards with them, and we played charades. You know, there there's. You, you just let your mind wander and you and you ask yourself, well, what does what does super senior Colleen like to play? And, you know, what does Iva enjoy? And uh, then there's Johnny who loves chess. He loves he loves. So we we made sure we had chess available. Um, wow. So it, it, it really is um, something it's play is a community unifier. It brings people together. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it helps people um, just let everything go by the wayside and you just have fun. Mm-hmm. And 
uh, from the videos, from reading the Play Day um, manual handbook. Uh, we also have a story or two in there. We have fl example flyers. We have an example volunteer form that we've created. So uh, depending on what you want to do, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> well, and the, what I really am wondering right now is I know you, but you've, you started this in Tacoma, right? Tacoma, Washington. Tacoma. Maryland. 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 Sorry. Apologies. There are two Tacomas. And <laughs> well, what I'm, yeah, what, what I'm wondering is, um, so I'm thinking about my community and this sounds like a dream. Like this sounds like something I'd love to do, but it scares me a little bit just, you know, pulling permits and, and figuring out the park you want to go to. And would you, do you need like hundreds of thousands of dollars to be able to pull something like this off or no? No, that, that's the thing, Kara. Um, <laughs> first off, uh, you find your playmates and to, to get your nucleus. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it, it'd be good to go and talk to, uh, if you have a council member or mayor, or if you have a recreation director, oh. uh, these are, these are the folks you really would like to talk to. Do you, do you have a business representative that represents the businesses in your, in your community, um, in your neighborhood? Who, who do you know who's fun? Cause you want, you want, you want to spend time uh, planning for this play day with people with fun. Uh, so, and uh, our, um, our children's librarian, who is fabulous, she, she kept telling me, Pat, you could do this. And so made a flyer, put it up around. And our very first meeting, March 15th, 2009, including myself, we had seven people. And, and that's a really nice start. And, and there were a couple of things that I already came to the meeting with. Um, uh, I, I may have talked to you about this before, but Kaboom, which are you familiar with that? No, yeah. not profit. They had a 10 year period. They stopped doing it a couple of years ago of naming cities, a playful city, mm -hmm. but I had just heard about it. They had just started it the year before. And I heard that, if we applied and if we mapped our playgrounds um, and we we said, yes, we will plan a play day, we could be named a playful city. So I told that to the group. And when I told them, I also had a date in mind. So you would need to look at a calendar of your community and you want to make sure there's no other big event going on. You want to make sure that say if you have a big say it's a college town and you have a football team and they're and it's going to be an away game you don't want to <laughs> have everybody's leaving town yeah. you want to have it when um hopefully the weather's good but that's it. another thing think wedding it could rain so you want to have a backup indoor place it could be a f pavilion like with 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 the way we're thinking now better to be outside with people. Yes. Um, I, if you had a, a uh, or maybe a huge tent, maybe you get some tent place to let you, they, they want to be a sponsor. Mm -hmm. And so they say, okay, put up a big tent. Um, and so in case it did rain, you could be under the tent. Um, and maybe it would be next to a playground. So there you have the playground. Uh, because it, it, it is great to have a playground nearby, um, but it's it's not the only thing for a play day. That's really cool. Um, and you can do this on a smaller scale, like you were mentioning at the beginning, that this could be within your school or your local park or maybe like a local library could put one on. So Yes, so our first one, our recreation director, she waived the fee. It was maybe $75 or 90 or something to um, be able to use this playground and it's called Hefner Playground, it, an indoor facility. So we were able to use all of it. And what was also great, across the street, 50 yards away, our public works was holding touch a truck. Aww. We, knew, we knew that families with young children were, were going to go to touch a truck. So <laughs> 
they they started at, at 10, we started at 11. And so people went from touch a truck and came over to the the play day. And, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of others just came because, uh, you, you do a lot of, um, um, advertising, but you keep it free. Uh, there's so much these days on social media, you can do it. Uh, if you have a local newspaper, they, they're a play day. What's that? They want to write about it. That's something fun. Their, their readers are going to want to know about it. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Well, I mean, I, I guess like, I kind of want to a little bit back up and go underneath the foundation of this a little bit, because I, I feel like we haven't talked yet. And I know we talked about it before. But let's talk a little bit about why the philosophy of a lot of the things that you do is around free play. And like with yeah. the boxes and that kind of thing, you talk a little bit about free play and why you incorporate these kind of free for alls into what you do. Oh, I, I'm so glad you brought that up, Carol, <laughs> because that is what got me started with all this. So I'm a former physical education teacher and coach. Mm -hmm. And the number one question over the years was, why can't we just play? And um, if you get to play what you want, and if you have choices and you get to play with your friends, oh my goodness, you're, you're like on top of the world. <laughs> yep. I, I started to really read about play and research it and realize that, that not everybody likes to play the same thing, but we all do like to play. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it could be that you like to play with dolls. That's fine. Um, a woman recently told me about building fairy houses. Yeah. And, yeah. Wouldn't that just be, so we're going to add that to our activities. I, I just love that. Uh, our, at our second play day, we added making mud pies. Ooh. He told me about the importance of tactile, of playing in the dirt. And we thought, how could we play in the dirt? And then next thing you know, and we even have a mud pie lady. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so back to um, the other thing is, is, um, how people all like to play different things. Sometimes you have a super senior playing with a four-year-old, a game of Uno. And oh. it's, it's, it's so much fun to watch. Oh. We, we have a queen of giant chess and she knows when she gets a young child, they more want to play with the pieces. But when she gets a six, eight, 10 year old, and they really want to learn, she starts to teach them how to play. And and then now and then someone will want to challenge her and play her, but it's hard to beat the queen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, Kara, uh, that, that is what made me say, what could we do? You know, what could we do that would, um, uh, because if we offered one activity at a play day, if we just offered chess, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a play day. It would be a chess day. Yes. <laughs> um, and and um, it would really limit who would come. You know, maybe you'd come. But if you if you like eh, chess, that's not for me. That's too hard or, uh, you know, no. Uh, so we strive to mix it up. But we, we always have a lot of our um regular activities because um, people even ask, are you going to have a box pad? Or, <laughs> but we also have mini tennis and floor hockey. And, and we bring in groups or people that um, say you play ice hockey for the local high school. You would be fabulous to lead the floor hockey because you know how to hold the stick and you, and you could teach uh, kids and adults. Yeah. Uh, we, bring in teens that are high level um, tennis players and it's really gratifying for them to be able to help a young person or or a senior mm -hmm. and and wrap wow so. that is it's so amazing and as you were going down the list of the, the playful activities i was thinking in my mind it was my first introduction or i should say reintroduction to play as an adult was burning man and we 
literally, as you were listing in the very beginning, all the things you had at your play days from giant chess to face painting and hula hoops only our hula hoops could also be on fire. But, you know, like all of those things you basically can find at at any local burn because they're pretty localized now around the world. And it just cracks me up how the games we played were very smart when we're children. We know what's fun. And a lot of I mean, I guess we want to imagine that we get more sophisticated, but really deep down, we're still, we still have fun getting our face painted and becoming a lion and, and jumping around on a chessboard and just whatever there it is. The, the only thing that maybe pulls us apart a little bit is our play personality. But if you have this vast array of things, different types of people can be having fun together. It just sounds like an amazing experience. You know, it, it, it really is. Um, I try not to give myself or I say, I don't really want to roll at the play day because yeah. I'm planning. I want to enjoy it. <laughs> and, um, I'm, I'm so fortunate now I have, um, uh, Christine Alexander. Uh, she, uh, many people helped with this play day handbook, but it, it, it probably couldn't have happened without her. And, she uh, volunteered at our September play day in 2019. She contacted me in an email and said, uh, do you, do you accept uh, adult volunteers? <laughs> yeah, that's what I did first. I laughed. Oh, oh yes. Tell me about yourself. Well, I graduated in theater. She's a, 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 an excellent student who loves to plan events and she wanted to volunteer. And we had recently gotten a puppet theater. And we had puppets. Oh. So I said, oh, how would you like to lead the puppet theater? Oh, I'd love it. Well, just watching her, Kara, mm-hmm. I mean, you would see like kids and their families walk by and she'd, she'd speak out with the, the puppet and the fox would say, how are you today? And oh. next, thing, next thing you know, the kids are coming in and she would offer them a puppet or they would they would get to play. And it was it was so engaging and wonderful. So uh, we started going for walks. And long story short, she became my assistant. Oh. And um, when COVID hit, what could we do? Uh, but uh, in in the handbook, uh, uh, we acknowledge a lot of wonderful people that have people that have helped us from the beginning. We have a dress up lady, mud pie lady. We have um, people that love to take photos. Uh, There's a story that's so special that a a girl was a high school teenager and she wrote a paper for her English class after the first play day. And it's it's just remarkable. Um, It's uh, it's in there because we said we this will let people's mind just totally wonder and and dream of the possibilities. Mm-hmm. They're endless. That's um, great. Big thing to do, Kara, is to think about your environment too. Uh, you know, maybe where where um, you live, there um, are some, maybe you have maybe you have a roller rink. And that's part of the play day or or maybe you have a lake and, you know, or just it doesn't it could be urban, rural, suburban, doesn't matter. Um, uh, think about what you have access to. Mm-hmm. And when you think about where you want to hold it, think about um, uh, how many people you'd like to uh, a goal. We, we wanted 200 people the first year and we, we were able to do it. Cool. Um, I'm looking forward to the day when it pops over a thousand, but we've definitely got come close. And hmm. so it's, it's. A- That's great. Well, and I mean, I, I'm thinking right now, here I am having this conversation, getting super excited and then crash down to earth. We're sitting here in this environment where we can't go anywhere or do anything, but um, that's not going to last forever. But in the meantime, right. what is happening that you can, that you're taking online? Like what is, you say you're doing some of these play days online. How does that work? Right. So we, we are really, we, um, we had scheduled for our 12th annual play day, Saturday, September 26th, 2020. 
for our uh, that play day. And we're going to call it our first virtual play day. And we have some ideas in mind. Uh, I, I've been told you can you can play bingo pretty easily on uh, 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 on Zoom. Mm-hmm. And um, this is something we will have people sign up for before. Um, there, there's several games that you can play. Our, our congressman still wants to lead. Simon says <laughs> uh, we're trying to figure out if you. Um, We'll need to sign up beforehand, which isn't as spontaneous as walking up to that play day. But we we also may um, on on a lot through social media, try to get you to go out and play something that day that you 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 really want to play, whether it go out and and let us know, like, let us know back on Twitter or Instagram, take a picture and have, have someone take a picture of you hula hooping or, or get out that sidewalk chop. What, what, what have you wanted to draw? And maybe you want to make a hopscotch and, and show us how you're playing that. It it doesn't matter. Uh, Maybe you can find a truck somewhere. (laughs) Yes. Uh, so we, um, finish, finish tweaking the handbook and then we're going to go hog wild into planning this virtual play day. That's great. Uh, it, you know, it it's reminds me of like the first play day. Cause we would think about what can, can we really do that? It's a really neat thing to, first of all, what you have done over the years in developing these play days and getting them out there to the world and doing them in your own community. But now to have this handbook, um, and yes, it came at a time when none of us can really do anything yet, but it's right. not going to be like this forever. And I mean, I just, as you were talking, I was getting excited thinking about, well, I guess I could spend this next few months then figuring out who in my city council or who in my neighborhood council would be the person to talk to. I know it'll take a while, especially in Los Angeles, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, but there's, no time like the present to dream it up, because even if we can't do it right now, we can dream it, dream about it. That's right. And um, you you just you don't know who is going to uh, say, I'd like to be involved in that. Mm-hmm. And maybe you can get an actor or an actress, you know, I've, I've sure. Yeah, I've, I've tried to get um, we, we've had some wonderful bands, but, you know, could you imagine um, having a well-known band or uh, something oh my wow like the droves that people would come if, if, only, if they, only if they get dressed up in ah! the dress up <laughs> i love it you can't come dressed up <laughs> absolutely well is there anything else that we're gonna run out of time here and i just want is there anything else you want to that you felt like you haven't talked about yet i know we had talked about um the handbook for sure and i got to ask you about free play which is one of the things i learned so much from you about Oh, oh, wow. Gosh. Um, on our website is is a um, resource also mm-hmm. for people. Uh, the, the Washington Post had interviewed me this this year uh, in May. What what could children play? So mm-hmm. that if you, if you go to the website and you click on press, there is some information there. OK. Uh, and uh, just, you know, remember that you deserve to play, whether you're two or ninety-two, um, you you really do, uh, Kara. And uh, um, I'm sure you'll tell folks about the website how they can get the handbook. Absolutely, I'll put links to everything. Oh, oh, wonderful! And um, and people are welcome to contact me. Uh, uh, we have two two emails we use. One is info at Let's Play America, and one's the Play Lady at Gmail. <laughs> Um, but, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I welcome the opportunity to, to hear from people. And I'm, I'm wondering though, since you interviewed me last, uh, do you know that I write for the play and playground magazine? No, I know you have the, the playbook that you had just right when I interviewed you. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually, um, I'm actually going to have a second book come out. Let's play outside oh. in tw- yeah, I, we're, we're hoping for the spring of 2021. But the Play and Playground magazine, uh, you can Google it or go on our website and, and you can you can um, it's a global digital online magazine that you can get for free. Great. But it's 
all over the world. And my uh, column's called Ask the Play Lady. Awesome. Uh, uh, Yeah. Well, this has just been fantastic. Uh, I love getting to talk to you and, and, and hopefully inspire people to play. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And just even just the the waterfall of ideas that just came to me as you were talking, just got, I'm so excited to see where this could go and anyone could do this, which That's is the right. fun part. If you want to become a play lady in your community or a play man, you just, <laughs> this is the handbook that you need to figure it all out. So, wow. That's right. And if you're, if you're at home saying, I'm bored or <laughs> what, what could I do next? Mm-hmm. It just will be something fun to have and enjoy. Yeah. A gift for the community and also just for the people around you as well. So great. Well, thank you thank so you. much. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye now. Thanks so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and you can go to the playgrounding.com website to sign up for our Grounds for Play newsletter. See you next week.